honestly. One of a kind. Absolutely one of a kind. Sort yourself out, son. Yeah, heaven forbid you look like you've got a bit of fluff on your jeans. We're keeping this in the edit, yeah? Yeah, it takes. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Anything else that you need to sort out before we get rolling, or are you are you good? Yeah. Yes. You're happy to go. <laughs> right then. Uh, so nice to have you back. Nice to be back. Lovely to see your face, and uh, thank you for coming up to Derby again. Always for you. Um, always. Where do where do we start? Where would you where would you like to start? Okay. This is the welcome bit of the podcast. This is where we say, "Hello, everybody! Welcome to another idea." Welcome to another idea podcast. Episode zero two zero two. <laughs> Here we go. Right. We're still learning, right? Yeah, I mean, we, we are. We are, we are in the absolute infancy of doing yes, we this. Are. So <laughs> there are going to be some um, there are going to be some special moments. I'm, I'm sure. But yes, there would will you be. like to do the welcome? Would you like to do the intro? Let's do the intro. Welcome to Another Idea Podcast, a podcast for creatives and entrepreneurs. And this is episode two with Sam and Igor. And you're going to meet a little bit about us, I guess. What's that subscribe thing we need to ask them to do? Oh, yeah, that thing. Um, well, please, guys, this being episode two, and we'll probably say this on every single episode anyway, but for this to grow... Well, is it okay if I put my arm around here? Yes, yes, okay. yes. Just checking, just, just checking on the boundaries. I mean, people, if people are listening to us on the on Spotify or iTunes, they're wondering what's going on. Yeah, that's this is it, actually that's going it. to YouTube as well, that's right? That's it. So, yeah, please subscribe and share. And yeah, this is the way that the podcast and this whole thing is going to grow and get some momentum. Yeah, and, and we hope it grows because people enjoy it. And yes, it brings value yes, to them. Yes, we're not just asking for a plug and a share no just for the definitely sake not of it. we want this to we want this to grow into something we don't even know what it's going to grow into yeah. just yet we've got some ideas yeah. um but without people kind of giving us a little shout out and a little mention yeah that's it um well if you if you can do that it's amazing it's really appreciated we're going to yeah. see all of them we're going to try and share as many as we can and, and respond to as many as we can that's it um, and it would just be great to know what you guys think that's it you know especially in the early days when we're trying to formulate the the podcast and yeah. trying to sort of see where it's going to go it, it'd just be good to kind of get a bit of input and a bit of direction yeah that's it so share it on instagram um comment on youtube and yeah we want to really create a community that's that's the thing as well um a back and forth with our audiences and yes well does that lead us on to the first question which is kind of how do we find ourselves here on this sofa um <laughs> <laughs> how long have you got um <laughs> How, how did how did we how did we I can't remember meeting you. Sorry, that, that's really offensive straight off the bat. Straight I off. can't remember meeting you before. <laughs> it's always um, been. <laughs> I've always been on your mind. It's always been you, infinite. You, so you, you definitely you, haven't. Yeah, yeah. So you couldn't see the start, and you will will never see the end of it. Um, but no, it's an infinite infinity loop. But no, <laughs> um, no, we met online. We met online at a photography group. Um, facebook group and a facebook group of like-minded photographers and eventually did a few meetups yeah as a group yeah. and yeah I, I don't think we it was a really it was a really like then as well it was a really good i mean now they're just they're everywhere aren't they those mm -hmm. communities but yeah but yeah we're talking sort of eight nine years ago yeah you know they were really near infancy and that was incredibly valuable valuable to i think both well, both of us will say it was crucial valuable. it was crucial you know, there were things that we picked up in that group that really helped kind of you know develop our businesses that yeah you just can't you just can't get when you're on your own all the time mm -hmm. you know we, we've talked before privately about how you know this could be quite a you know a, a, an insular and lonely and solitary kind of craft yeah you know although you go to weddings and you know we're wedding photographers you know we can go to weddings and it can be very busy and, and exciting but actually when you come to the, just being in the office on your own on a Tuesday afternoon it can be quite lonely that's it and having that network and that's that community to support you it can be just absolutely invaluable can't it to any business and yeah I don't think it matters when you're starting it's, it's important to to surround yourself with 
like-minded creatives and, and people and people that inspire you as well yeah it's it's crucial it, and it really has changed the business at least for me and, and i know for you as well but um well we wouldn't be here would we yeah that's it and meeting online was one thing and even meeting in person um like we had get-togethers and stuff like that yeah. but i think things changed for me and you when we sort of like started sharing um inquiries because in some ways our style is quite similar or our mindset is quite similar i think that's, yeah, I, that's think so. I think that's i, I, think, I so. think that's the best way and the I way we both, show up online. i think we're both very driven yeah we're both keen to sort of develop our businesses yeah never just never just rest on our laurels and just go yeah do you know what we've, we've we're done here we're good like yeah. let's just let's just keep doing what we're doing we're always keen to yeah, you know, how can we improve? How can we make things better? How can we sort of move on to, mm -hmm. you know, a, a, another, you know, another a, exactly why we're here doing yeah. a podcast because of the yeah. those conversations that we have. Yeah, have you thought about this and what about doing this and and yeah, and especially, um, <laughs> I guess let's bring it back. Really, I think it's the whole that thing. that worries of the... me when you when you start when <laughs> no, you start no, alive no, with no. a laugh. <laughs> it worries me as to where we're going to go. No, it's that that whole thing of three years ago us being sat. Uh, somewhere in Leicester, yeah, and dreaming a up, little coffee shop, yeah, on dreaming, a high street corner, <laughs> yeah, dreaming up about starting a YouTube channel, yeah. We didn't really know what we were doing or how or why. I mean, I didn't even know how to turn the camera to video <laughs> record. <I'd... laughs> it was really fun because literally we put the camera in front of us in this coffee shop and just feeling really self conscious of, yeah. <laughs> about what we were doing because, yeah. Um, but it was the start of something really and nothing really although, yeah although that never really materialized exactly yeah. how we we planned it certainly when i well, i think when i look back on it, it it was a turning point or it it just started a series of events that would mean that we eventually got here yeah um and you know i i love the idea i love it when people kind of say look if you've got an idea you just need to make a start you need to go for it but actually you know, it's not always about just doing like making a start in that business. You actually mm -hmm. need to start on the fundamentals and the and the and the things that go into creating that business. Mm -hmm. You can't just start a business. You know, so like our example is, or for me anyway, personally, it was filling those knowledge gaps. Yeah. And going, do you know what? Okay, I don't know how to film myself. I don't know how to talk to camera. I don't know how to record content. So maybe I just need to start working on those little elements of my business. Yeah. And then over time they kind of just come together, don't they? Yeah. Um, and not putting too much. I think that sometimes that saying can put a little bit too much pressure on people to just start and get on with it. And actually, you need to sort of break it down a little bit. Have a little plan and, yeah, rever reverse engineer things and see, speak to yourself where you want to see yourself being in, I don't know, five months in a year time and then just work the steps backward, really, in order to really see how you can actually implement those steps in order to start whatever you want to start, really. Yeah. But yeah so that was so that was what almost three years ago now yeah so a few things have happened in the world since Ever then. Since. <laughs> and uh, i mean we could just say covid ruined it for us yeah, right that's let's it. just let's just blame it all on all the pandemic <laughs> um but actually I, th I i wonder if covid actually had a, a, a huge impact on both of our businesses because I, for me um covid did a couple of things it first and foremost it, it made me stop it made me stop going into just another wedding season and just shooting and going doing what I would always do. Yeah. Um, and obviously it's a, a huge time of reflection. I think we all kind of spent a bit of time to just think about where our businesses were at, what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and it made me really concentrate on, well, okay, where do I want to go in the next four, five, six years? And I don't think people do that enough. I think we just get into the start of the year and we just go, right, oh, let's just get through this year. And before you know it, it's December. Yeah. Yeah, but sometimes it's really important to just take a step back and just to analyze where you're at and where you might want to go. Yeah. And then the second part is that it, it forced me to fill those knowledge gaps. It forced me to go, do you know what? I'm, I need to start picking up some of these skills that yeah. are going to help me grow my business. And that was exactly when I started to play about with, you know, filming content. Filming content. And you know, and yeah. not much of it saw the light of day, but that's not the point. Yeah. The point is that I... I, I filled those knowledge gaps and I started to recognize actually no it's not too this isn't as intimidating as I think the coffee van's pulled up outside <laughs> hey 
<laughs> I, wouldn't, I don't think they'll hear that on there. Hopefully, but we've got hopefully a, you can't hear it. We've got a coffee van that arrives on site, but it plays the tune of an ice cream van. So you're enjoying that, aren't you? I am. Um, so yeah, how, how do you, like putting that question to you, how do you, how do you see that, that the last sort of couple of years and how that's impacted your business? And Yeah, um, and I know it's not the right wording for it, but I almost see, um, obviously not COVID, but yeah, the whole the hard reset that COVID produced on the business, I see it very much as a blessing because I just had to really refocus on on the way I see the business going and, and the way I think about the business in general, really, and, and pivoted hard into education. And, and and I couldn't be more grateful. Yeah. And both of us already were in the education space. Oh, God, yeah, absolutely. Already, yeah. already doing workshops, already doing... Um, talks, Men- mentoring. conferences, mentoring and everything else. But it just meant that things had to go, we had to go hard at it. We had to go 100 into it. And and that meant that, as you said, yeah, filling those knowledge gaps. Um, we almost like did it together, which was the yeah, fun, yeah, about, yeah, yeah. Totally. fun thing about it. Um, I mean, we were literally, at, at, you know, from the ground up it was yeah. like uh, so how do you once you've how do you synchronize those clips <laughs> sending things to how, each other and... how do you slice up a video clip <laughs> uh, you know just the absolute basics but that for me is no different to when we got into photography mm-hmm. oh, it certainly didn't feel it anyway like you know you you have that spell of oh, i don't know if I, I don't know if i know how to do this you know do i need to go on a course do i need yeah. to like fi-? but over time it just becomes second nature doesn't it you know, like we can go and chop these videos together now in Final Cut in no time. And yeah. it's like, oh, I don't even think about it. Much in the same way, I can still remember opening up Lightroom for the first time and going, <laughs> what the hell do I do here? Yeah. And I guess that's that's why it's so good. Um, today, there's no excuse. There's no excuse for people not to know how to do specific th- specific things, really, yeah. in terms of creativity and everything else. Because it's all on YouTube. It's all online. And... Do you think it's part of... Do you think it's part of growing growing a bit older and a bit you know just being a bit more comfortable you know once you kind of you've built that business and you've gone through those those hard mm-hmm. you know yeah. opening years yeah that once you've done that oh, and yeah. you just get into the comfortable zone of mm-hmm. being mm-hmm. Oh, i'm busy okay good yeah i'm not i'm not going to do anything else now because yeah. i've done it i've you, done the you hard park bit. it a little yeah. bit don't you and i think for me like the covid year or this this transition has made me realize that i need to shake things up a little bit more often yeah and and really start to force change or and you know what sometimes it'll work out sometimes it won't yeah constantly be involving constantly learning because if you're not learning you're not growing you're not pushing things forward really and yeah yeah we have a mind for a reason really so yeah, yeah. and it's very easy i think when you're self-employed and and, and you know we're in we're of the eight of the eight the age we're at it would have been very easy for us both just to sit back and go yeah i'm just gonna just carry on doing photography yeah, and I'm not against being a photographer. No, no, yeah, we've talked about not. it in the first episode. I absolutely love it. Yeah, but I enjoy the challenge now. And I think, as well as creatives, I think this is this is the beauty of creatives in general. You don't need to sort of like box yourself in on I'm a photographer, I'm a designer, I'm, I'm whatever, and that's the only thing that you can do. There's mm. so many other different ways of uh, differentiating or. I don't know what what the right word would be, but um, there's so many different ways of creating and filling little spots of your business out there, really, and bringing revenue through different streams. Still being a creative and still being well, especially a, on when, brand, especially with when you look at especially when you look at the landscape and the environment we all now mm. live in, where education is at a it's you know it's five seconds away Yeah, to figure something out is five seconds away. You know, I can remember I was actually going through some photos in the office today. I was clearing out some photos and I've got a pile of photographs my mum gave me a few years ago that I need to scan. <laughs> I still need to scan them. If my mum's watching this, she's going to have a go at me because they just sat in a drawer. But I saw a picture of me and my two brothers at my nan and granddad's house. Um, I must have been about 12, 13 and my granddad had bought our first computer and it was an Amstrad. <laughs> And it was a box. It was huge. <laughs> and we and I can see on the screen I got I think it was Sim City was on it. Um I kind of lost my I train of thought here. The Sims. But 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 I but it makes me it just made me think, God like in order to gain that knowledge, you would have had to go and hunt down books. You would have had to you know, I remember we had Encarta ninety five on, mm-hmm. on C D. You know, like the access to knowledge then just did not exist. Whereas now 
there is no excuse. Yeah, there literally is no excuse. And I very much, I don't even see myself as a photographer these days. I see myself very much almost like a... Fashion, a I- fashion icon. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, I'll, I can take that. Um, no, um, almost like a company. Almost like a company. Yeah. And yeah, I guess that's that's why the podcast this, is what is what it is entrepreneurs yeah yeah and this is now just another facet of your yeah. of your business that's and your it. company that's it you know um, where are we going to go next um i think what why this podcast and the sort of like core values of it yep um why we wanted to actually start this and 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 push it forward and what made us what? sort of like push I, it I'm forward? not sure. I mean, I think we talked about this in the very first episode where we introduced what's going to happen. And yeah. for me, it, was, it is based really around the idea of me and you opening up the conversations that we already have together as individuals and putting them out there into the public domain. Yeah. But also, the, the second part of that is to bring in guests that inspire us, creatives, mm-hmm. and to be able to kind of really tap into their knowledge and their experience and to kind of help us both grow as well. Yeah. And then opening that conversation up to the, these guys. To everybody else, um, yeah. And that, I think, is actually the part that, that excites me more than anything else with the podcast, is not knowing where that's going to go. Yeah. Not knowing who we're going to talk to, not knowing the conversations we're going to have, not yeah. knowing the the experiences that people are going to go and give us. Because, you know, we've we've been to workshops and conferences before, right? And I can remember going to a conference in 2015 and, and taking away... This is like a week-long conference, but taking away one line of information from a <laughs> from a photographer and being like, "Wow, that's that's really shifted the direction of my mindset, yeah. and my business." And all you needed was that one line, and it's huge, invaluable. It was worth the entire workshop week. Yeah. I mean, I had a great time that week, yeah. but actually, that that was hugely valuable. Yeah. And the exciting thing is that opening this space, people can find that one line here. Hopefully every yeah. episode. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Come on. But no, we like we do. We like our core values are that we, you know, we want to bring value to people that are listening. This isn't just a, you know, a laugh and a joke podcast, is it, yeah. Igor? I mean, yeah. obviously there's going to be a bit of humor and mild yes, banter in there because I'm going to absolutely take the mickey out of you every, every opportunity <laughs> I get. But, the, you know, the whole point is that we want to bring value to our, our listeners and our audience. Yeah. Um, and we're going to do that by bringing people on board and, yeah. and having conversations. And, yeah. And elevate creatives and yeah it's it's just really exciting and i think we've been very intentional with the name and um, keeping things quite open and malleable the fact that hey uh, don't be surprised if you get another idea conference or something like that yeah in the future but i can um, see the branded t-shirts now eagle yeah that's it merch whatever else really um but just keep things open. Yeah. And who, who are we trying? Who do we think? Who do you think we're trying to appeal to in, in the podcast? Who's uh, who's our audience? Um, yes, creatives that have been at it for a good few years, and 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 I'm intentional in saying creatives. Whilst we are photographers, um, it's for designers, it's for architects, it's for uh, magazine publishers, whatever. Um, people that are creative and don't put limits on what they actually do and what and what they can achieve through whatever medium and at the same time entrepreneurs people that are business minded and really want to push things forward within their business and find different ways of earning yeah. money and well, we, we, we both know from audiences. we both know from experience like being self employed and mm. we touched on this at the beginning can be quite can be quite lonely and yeah. hopefully you know we're going to give people a little bit of a bit of entertainment along the way yeah and just to fill an hour hour and a half of their week maybe yeah. i mean some episodes might be half we don't know we don't know where this <laughs> we is don't know go. yet we don't know yet um, so, yeah but um, we're looking forward to we've got some guests identified yeah. haven't we yeah and indeed. we're looking at anybody that's in the you know kind of creative industry mm-hmm. creative businesses yeah again self-employed yeah um and yeah we got structure at the moment that again it can change but for now 10 episodes that's what we want to do and that will be me and you yep. going back and forth on specific topics. And yeah, we'll ask you, the audience as well, um, for some 
input into that into yeah. some of the episodes and we're, you know we're on a journey here aren't we yeah like we're gonna make you said to me before we even start recording we're gonna make some mistakes yeah i don't like that i don't <laughs> like making mistakes <laughs> talk to mr perfectionist um, <laughs> yeah but that's again that's that's exact i don't know I, I think people become so fearful of messing up from this like i don't know this whole idea of like just get on with it and start and build it they will come and, and it has to be you know we live in an age where you get to see everybody else's businesses and perfect lifestyle that yeah it almost hinders other people that it makes people fearful of even starting a business mm -hmm, that's because it. it's never perfect off the bat you know there's always improvements to be made but if you never start that process or you never make those steps you you're never gonna like we can't judge ourselves against you know a number one podcast in the uk right now can we <laughs> we're, like we can't because we're not we're not in that position yet we're on episode two you know but some people have been doing podcasts for five six seven years it's um, exciting. I just, I, I'm just excited for the journey. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And the conversations yeah. and yeah, and the, that's it. It's in some lessons. ways, in some ways, yeah. Again, it's not even destination. Yeah, uh, I was dreaming big with conference and all that, but no, it's it's the journey really. That's where really it gets me going, and to see literally the mistakes that we'll make and how we'll learn and how we'll push things forward, and the opportunities, that, the, the opportunities that it will bring. That's yeah. again, it's really exciting. So, I'm all on yeah. board, Igor. Sign yeah. me up. Boom, boom, boom. But yeah, um, the main thing or the main point of this episode is for the audience to get to know me and you. Yeah. So how did we start into wedding photography? Are we, are we asking that now or do we need to check the time on the camera? Because our time has gone up, hasn't it? <laughs> we we said, we, I did we, ask you. We, we, said, ask you, we is, said that we'll make mistakes. I did say to you, is that laptop going to go into sleep mode? And you went, no, it'll be no, fine. No. It's gone into sleep mode, And all it, I can Igor? see is Sam's MacBook Pro. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. And we're back. And we're back. So we've established that you didn't check that the laptop was going to go into sleep <laughs> mode, but we've sorted that problem. So I'll, I'll forgive you for that one today. Thank so okay, you. Got... Thank you, darling. Um, how, how do we start in, in photography and how do we get into wedding photography? How, how did you start in, in, those indus in that industry? Um, I started quite early on. I was probably, what, 23 um, when I started... Um, 23, 22. Um, and I went to uni, Southampton, to study graphic design. And on my first foundation year, we literally got exposed to so many different um, topics um, yep. or art forms, really. And photography was one of them. Literally just learning how to shoot manual and stuff like that. Um, not even that. We didn't even get to that, but just shooting just for my own graphic design work and everything else. And I found myself really enjoying it. So I started doing some street photography. Yeah. And and I still remember today just going out and taking plucking up the courage of um, asking this like really cool black dude with a hat on, trench coat, just really cool. He, he, yeah. should, he should be like in this... In the 60s, 70s. Your, have you got a brother? Is that what you're going to tell me? <laughs> <laughs> and... Yeah, and um, just started taking some street photography, and I still remember the portraits of that specific guy. On film uh, or on digital? Digital, and uploading it to Flickr. Oh. <laughs> Winding back the, the clock. good did old you, days. Did you then post it to Tumblr as well? <laughs> I think I did, actually. Yeah. I did have a Tumblr account. Um, and a good friend um found it found the images and she really liked them and it was a massive mess like street photography studio stuff nothing made sense but somehow she saw something in that and hey Igor do you want to photograph my wedding amazing and it's amazing how that that one person's that that conversation just triggers snowball effect into the everything that's happened since it is it is crazy in some it's amazing that people can see the potential in something so early on as mm. well like that mm. i mean very I'm not, true i'm not knocking you I'm, no 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 a, I, i'm not taking a dig at you but no. obviously you you can recognize that your work then was um it needed work yeah right yeah but, <laughs> massive <laughs> but somebody saw something in you and and decided to take a little bit. what i mean we know it now as a bit it would have been a risk oh i certainly i can remember my first one i like, thinking god they booked me off nothing really yeah and that was a huge gamble. Um, obviously, what they paid was reflective of that, you know, uh, yeah. my, my experience. Mine was 500 pounds. 400, and... <laughs> 400 for me. And being a student, that was, a lot of that was everything. Yeah. 
Um, it soon gets spent though, doesn't it? When you need to go back oh, yeah. here, but we can oh, get yeah, onto definitely. that. That's probably for another. That's probably for another episode. <laughs> um, so what what happened then? So you went and shot. Well, you shot a wedding. Shot that wedding and really enjoyed it. And I'm very much of a people person, so yeah, I found myself in my element there. But um, nothing happened from it really. I parked it there, and it was only until I got engaged with my wife Zion, and we, I started looking at wedding photographers. Um, just thinking about getting engaged and yeah, start looking at wedding photographers and found incredible wedding photographers out there. Yeah. And my perception of a wedding photographer always used to be quite stale, traditional, um, stand in front of a camera and I'll say cheese. Um, and to be able to find these photographers out there, mainly from the US and all over the world, but mainly from the US, that were doing things in a really different way, in a really unique voice, yep. um, to be able to express their art form through something that I always considered to be so stale and traditional, I found that incredible, really. So with that one wedding that I had shot, um, I started knocking on people's doors at church, whatever. Hey, yep. you guys are getting married. Do you need a wedding photographer? Um, you guys, um, you're a cute couple. Could we do an engagement shoot or something, <laughs> yeah. something like that? Yeah. And yeah, things snowballed from there. Um, first year, probably three, four weddings, and then as the years went on, and yeah, by the end, by the time that I finished uni, um, yeah, I was probably shooting around eighteen to twenty-five weddings. And but you shot that. You, am I right? And you shot that whilst you were also holding down a, co a corporate job. Yeah, that was afterwards, which which, which even which kind of blows my mind, really. That yeah, you could do that volume of weddings. And yeah, a, and a that was even job. more. So to to be working at Mastercard and be shooting thirty, yeah, pretty much thirty weddings a year for a good three four years. Um, do you yeah. miss, do you miss the corporate lifestyle? Oh no, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> I I am so. <sighs> I would never hire me. I I, gen, I genuinely don't know how people. I don't know how people do it time and time. You know, even me and Amy were listening to the radio the day, and there were people texting into the radio station to say they were skiving. You know, they were hiding in the toilets or they were in the back in the warehouse, and and it just it made me go, how do people how do people go through those that motion day in day out? Yeah. Um, I can't imagine being in a job that's just so unsatisfying that you have to yeah. text the radio station and say that you're skiving off. Yeah, yeah. Um, it just it astonishes me. Um, <laughs> so, but obviously, you you, you, know, you left the corporate world and you know becoming full time. When, when, yeah, when did it, you become full time? Eventually, eventually, it got to the stage that um, I was earning literally double in wedding photography than in the co corporate world in, at Mastercard and. Yeah, it took me a few years, really. It, my, my my sort of, like, rise up into going full-time took me a good few years. And whenever I chatted to people, really, um, within the industry, they would always think that I was um, shooting full-time simply because... Um, well, you, well, it came across as though you were shooting full-time. Yeah. You, you were doing the numbers that would suggest you were yes. shooting full-time. And, and, you and, did well to keep your marriage intact, really. <laughs> like, <that's... laughs> and the travel <laughs> and everything else. But no, and, and, and in some ways... And I constantly say this at, at workshops and conferences that I, I would never be here today if it wasn't for my wife because constantly, constantly, constantly she gave me so much time and very much believed in, yep. in what I was doing really in order to allow me the time and space really to grow the business. And, and well, it's, a, it's a huge commitment. Yeah, it's it a really massive is. commitment. It really is. You know, really, and really, and really I think is. anybody that wants to get into the industry and is starting out. Yeah. Um, we can't, you can't sugarcoat it, can you? Yeah. Like th those first couple of years whilst you are honing mm. your craft, you're cutting your teeth or, you know, yeah. you know, that is, that is hard. That, hard that's work. when you are up till one, two in the morning, editing, figuring yeah. stuff out. You know, you're, you're doing a, a job in the, in the week and then going and shooting on yeah. the weekend. That's it. So to do that and, and have a relationship, you need somebody that's going to be supportive it's of massive you and, and to, to be able to let you go and achieve that. Mm -hmm. Um, but you've gone and achieved it. Yeah. Like you've, you've gone on to be, you know, um, and I'm not going to blow smoke up you here, but like an incredible <laughs> photographer, like, you know, hugely recognized in our industry, uh, definitely in the UK and, and certainly worldwide as well as being a, you know, you have a very clear 
um, visual identity as, and, and you know your work. Like I know when I scroll through Instagram, you could take away all the names. I know when an image of Igor's comes up on my feed without yeah. even seeing your name. Yeah. Um, which I think is a pretty good compliment, right? Yeah, it really is. And it, it, it really is a big compliment. And yeah. in some ways, looking back at those wedding photographers that was very much like, ooh, they are, have a visual identity, identity and they're doing things different in their own way. Yeah. Um, to be able to be here today and kind of like, yeah, be able to stop someone on Instagram and they'll say, oh yeah, that's definitely Igor, that's definitely Sam. Um, yeah, it's it's a great compliment. But um, Igor aside, how how did you start? Uh, I'd say there were de- there are def- definite similarities there. Um, I didn't have the corporate job that that you had in the in the in the early years. Um, I um I took a kind of a different route. I, I you you touched on something about that that first experience of playing around with a camera, and I can it may it took me right back to one of my only kind of positive kind of school experiences. And we'll get on to school school life in a little bit, but I remember going to do an art foundation course. Um, I stuck it out for about three weeks. <laughs> um, I wasn't very good at. Uh, I just didn't. I just d- didn't like. You know, the the structure of school. It wasn't for me. Yeah. But again, we'll we'll come to that in a bit. But I can remember on this art foundation course, taking a film camera and just going around a park, um, <laughs> and just going to develop that film. And yeah. actually, when I look back on it, I, I really, I genu- I don't have many regrets in you know in my life generally. But I do often look back on that and go, I wish I'd, I wish I'd have recognised that um just that connection that i had to to that piece of kit and just yeah just to be able to go mm. i should have pursued that harder at the time yeah. and i think that those experience that experience has almost led me to like now and kind of going i can see something here i can feel mm-hmm. it i'm going to go and do it you know rather than just letting it sit and yeah and, and waste away um but that's kind of going off on a tangent and, <laughs> it's and a I'll good do, tangent i do that quite a lot i've got a bit of a scatter brain <laughs> um but yeah for me very similar i mean you know, I've always been into the arts and, and design worlds. Um, I studied creative product design and marketing, um, which which was great, but it was also not great. Um, I, I didn't feel particularly inspired by my tutors. Mm-hmm. Um, but from the back end of my degree, I ended up with um, with one of my best friends setting up a, um, a a clothing business, and we bought and sold secondhand clothing and sold it you know, all over the world. We had you know. Uh, four or five staff at one point in a, a warehouse far bigger than the studio we're in right now yeah and that was really that was my education into photography because we sold it you know we started out on ebay we then had our own website we did marketing material and and that was kind of my job role within the business was to kind of create that content and the bits that i loved most about that job were right we've got some new stuff in let's go and get some let's go and get some new updated marketing material yeah. for the business and i used to love that and when that business started to kind of peter out and we decided that it wasn't going to be what we both wanted to do, Mm -hmm. um, that coincided with, um, just a couple of people getting a couple of friends getting married that said, Oh, would you, would you, would you do our wedding for us? And Mm -hmm. in that, in that kind of time as well, I, I I went to work for, uh, boots in digital marketing. Um, and just the contrast of having that wedding and then going to work in boots, I just made it. I just couldn't do it. The sense of I, excitement I that you would feel at a wedding, or yeah. even even whilst you're editing and and getting seeing the sort of like end results, and then having to sit down at your cubicle or whatever nine till five. Just silence as well. Just silence in that office. Um, Day and night. It just wasn't for me. It just didn't fulfil me in yeah. any kind of way. Um, and I realised that pretty quickly. But. Yeah, I, I use some of those images and I just sort of, you know, put things out on Facebook and, you know, again, we can talk about how you kind of market yourself now, but, you know, back then it was just, I, I don't think anything, I think Instagram had just started, mm. you know, so there was no, there was no audience there, but it would just be put some things out on Facebook and literally tell people, you know, I remember choosing a wedding because a girl worked with my mum and my mum told her I'm a, <laughs> I'm a photographer. So, you know, that's, but that's how I started and... I used those early weddings to build a site, to yeah. put more work out. And I just fed the system. Yeah. And me, me, Gemma, we, me, Gemma had had Betsy at the start of that year. Um, in September, so Betsy would have been about seven or eight months old. We went to Centre Parks for a week with some friends. And I can still remember on that Sunday evening, you know, kind of, I used to dread going back in on a Monday. And, and I'd only been there two or three months. I yeah. hadn't been there long at all. Um, but at Centre Parks on that Sunday, 
I checked my phone and I'd had, I think four or five inquiries that day alone <laughs> for the following year. And I, I can remember just checking my phone and then going to Gemma, I'm, I'm going to, I think I'm going to have my notes in tomorrow. And she looked at me and was like, can we afford to do that? <laughs> I was like, I'm going to make this work. And like, I just, and I just knew, yeah. I just knew that yeah. off the back of the very little bit of work I'd already done yeah. to generate that traffic and those inquiries early on mm-hmm. that I was going to be okay. I think it's, it's funny you say that. And, and I see so many times, um, with other creatives and other photographers that that is one of the things that in some ways I, it's not necessarily that I regret it, but, um, Don't drink the coffee. Oh. The coffee's gone cold. Got. <laughs> um, it's not necessarily a thing that I regret, but I love the fact that you, you literally made it, made a hard decision, a choice. I'm going to quit my job and literally go all in into photography. And I, th- I think as well, I, I find it very hard to do something half-heartedly. Yeah. Like I'm not somebody that's just going to, I'll just dabble with it. Yeah. I- I'm either all in or, or I'm nothing. not. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, whereas for me, it was very much a gradual thing. Um, first year, a specific amount, and then and then kept going until I just couldn't do it any both anymore. And then... Did you, did you burn jump. out? Did you burn out then? I wouldn't say I burnt out, no, because... You didn't break your body. No. I can I, imagine the, physic, the, like, the physicality of that, mm, that. You can't have had much rest that year. I didn't, I didn't know any different, but at the same time... Again, Zion, she was she she was and still is incredible at that. And yeah, um and at the same time I really fought for it. Um I used to work six till two, so six in the morning till two in the afternoon, because uh we would have sort of like um catch Australia and in the morning and then move slowly, slowly into the US and and then get home half two, whatever, and then just work until silly hours yeah and yeah you can only sustain that for so long though exactly that's 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 the reality at the same time i'm really grateful that I started young not to say that you can't do it um a later a later stage or a later age definitely not but yeah um i i think i don't know i just, i look back with fondness i actually look back yeah to those years with fondness and um and i worked hard and i find myself no one's doubt, do- no one's doubting you, Igor. Like we we totally get <laughs> yeah, we yeah. totally get that you did. And, and, like, and in some ways, sometimes I wish it's not even a wish. I, I, sometimes I look back and I think to myself now, and I'm thinking, hmm, am I working as hard as I used to work yeah. back then? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and have that sense of excitement and everything else. So in some ways, that's why this podcast again, it's it's a wonderful well, there's thing. There's always there's always that there's always that sense. I think when you're self-employed, that somebody's just going to pull the rug from under your feet. Mm, yeah, you know, we've definitely felt that a little bit with COVID. I say a little bit. I think people have felt it a lot with COVID. It was, yeah, you know, it was a it was a very very hard hard pull from under the feet, wasn't it? Yes. You know, but I mean, I, I go back to before I kind of got into wedding photography. Like, you know, we stepped away from that business because that business failed. Yeah, and. At times, I've kind of downplayed the significance of that, mm-hmm. but there's no doubt that that has really kind of it's kind of acts as a real catalyst for now to make sure that I I I'd, I'm not going to get caught short with this business. That's it. Um, yeah, that business failed for mo- for a multitude of reasons, but one of the core reasons for me it failed was because we never evolved as a as a business. We we kept trying to do what we'd done for years gone by. Yeah. And we never moved with the times. We didn't embrace new social media. Yeah. We didn't explore you know, new business opportunities. So you failed. You failed. We but, failed. I mean, we didn't fail catastrophically, but I learned a, an enormous amount from it. Yeah. And and that has that has been a, a, a huge impact on on my you know my career since. Yeah. Um, and I'm not going to make those same mistakes again. Yeah. Um, any early day mistakes? Um, <sighs> not <laughs> at wedding photography or anything. No, not 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 as such. No, I'd say I've been touch wood, or well, I mean, in the early days, I, I was so I was so scared about making mistakes that I just I over, like there was precautions on top of precautions, mm-hmm. and and you know contingencies in place that yeah. meant you know I almost couldn't mess up. But <laughs> I think the only thing I ever did that I would look back and go, I messed up a bit there, and, and I was very fortunate. Really, was um, it was just. We were moving into our second house. Um, we've got our second child on the way, 
it was like the middle of August and I'm in the new house getting the floors sanded um, and it's I like a what's Tuesday and, I know what's coming and, and my phone went off <laughs> and it was a couple that were dri- that had driven an hour to a location for an engagement shoot oh at least that at and least I was, that I was I was <laughs> at good least 40, it wasn't a wedding I was 45 minutes away <laughs> But do you know what? Like, it, honestly, it still astounds me to this day that the response I got, well, I answered the phone and as soon as I saw his name come up on the phone, I was like, you knew shit. <laughs> and I answered the phone and went, mate, I am so, so, so sorry. I've messed up. I've messed up big time. I'm at, I'm in the house. I'm not going to be able to make the shoot. I'm, I'm doing this. And he was like, Sam, don't worry about it, mate. I, I still can't get my head around how you could be told that. Yeah. To have taken time out of their evening to have got ready to have driven an hour to then find that your photographer is 45 minutes away in his joggers sanding a bedroom floor <laughs> right and he just went Sam don't worry about it these things these things happen it's like it's life don't worry about it and I I went look mate I'm so sorry I'm going to refund you tomorrow in yeah. full for the shoot and we'll reschedule it for the following week yeah he was like okay great cool you know I think in times like that you know, when you do make a, a mistake like that, you have to put your hands up. And, hands up, that's it. And just take it on the chin. Um, yep. I was very lucky though. Very lucky that I had a couple that were just enormously understanding of the yeah. situation. What yeah. about you? Can you top that? Uh, I think I can. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I think I can. Stra- let's strap in. Yeah, I guess. Shooting a whole wedding, well, majority of the wedding in small JPEG, and yeah, this when, was when was this? How long this ago? was five, uh, a good few years, probably eight years. And for the for the non photographers that might be listening, to yeah, this, that don't understand that term. So basically, you're shooting. You want to just elaborate? <laughs> you're not even shooting in RAW. You're not even shooting in the um, the format that where you'll be able to edit images and have a really good. Um, good looking yeah. image so a, J- a jpeg is the most basic form of an image exactly. whereas a raw file holds all of the information and, that's it and you're allowed to manipulate that, that, that in the edit and then shrink that image to the smallest thing yep. that you can find yep and yeah that's what i well how did you feel <laughs> at what point did you recognize that you'd made that mistake it was i had delivered the whole wedding i actually had delivered the whole wedding i still hadn't realized what i'd done wow yeah, it was. <laughs> uh, okay, I was that new. Uh, did that. the couple know what you'd done? No, they did not. Um, I but mean, I, hope, I hope you. They I hope did not. Until, couples aren't listening. They, they did not until um, until they came uh, to print something. Yes, exactly that. Exactly that. And I still went back and forth, and I still couldn't figure out why why it wasn't working until eventually I realized my mistake, and. It was hard. It was hard to, literally, again, I had to hold my hands up and, and fully refund them. And yes, they had images, but... It's an expensive, it's an expensive lesson. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think you have to put yourself in the position of, the, of your couple and just recognise that, That's it. you know, you've messed up. Yeah. And I think it's the only, it's the only it feels like the only fair and right thing to do. Um, but like we've talked about a couple of times, the only thing you can do is to learn from that. Yep. And to, to take something away from that experience. It definitely and, never happened again. No, I can imagine it hasn't. <laughs> what about uh, good experiences? Should we, should, let's put it, let's, let's bring something, you know, brighter yeah. and better and more yeah, positive to definitely, the table. Yeah, definitely. I think um, one of the amazing experiences of this job is that, and I really consider myself having the best job in the world. Yes, it can be taxing sometimes in terms of time or whatever, but um, especially being self-employed, we are able to control that to an extent. Um, so to be able to travel and and bring along my family and yeah just discover the world and see things from a different lens and learn about new cultures and um, enjoy food that we've never yeah ne- never had. Where we sat in where, where where did we have a bottle of wine the, the other year? Where, 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 was it Mallorca? <laughs> it was in Mallorca and and that was so serendipitous. Yeah, just about, like let's just think about this for for a second. You know, me and you have just picked up a camera, started taking photos of people's weddings and fast forward eight, nine years, we sat in a, you know, a pretty nice restaurant in Mallorca, yeah. Yeah. just having a bottle of red yeah. and just enjoying chatting. great food. And yeah. And yeah, that trip was, was incredible. And I absolutely loved Mallorca for that. Um, but yeah, I think that's, that's 
one of the amazing things really the experiences that yeah and opportunities that this job has brought so to be able to travel with 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 the girls and go to places like hawaii hong kong marrakesh uh, iceland and you just don't do that normally in like no. a you just don't do that normally in a, I don't know, nine to five job, whatever you want to call it. So to be able to have those opportunities and yeah, um, I want to, I want to have more of that. I want to yeah. have more of that really. And I think, I think on a, 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 in its most basic form, just like the flexibility of being yeah. self-employed, I think for yeah. me is often like, you know, it's like, again, exactly like you, the opportunities that it's presented, like being able to travel to places that we would never have chosen to go to. Yeah. You know, like we went to Antigua a couple of years ago and, We've been to the Philippines. Yeah, like we would never have just gone. Do you fancy going to Antigua next year? <laughs> it would just never happen. Yeah. Um, but actually, I, I I feel fortunate on a day to day basis when I can kind of just go and do a school run. Yeah. And I haven't got to worry. Or yeah. I can just nip home and you know and and, and see the kids at, at a decent hour and not be not be one of those parents that leaves the house at six in the morning and comes back at seven eight o'clock at night. Yeah. Um, I I can't think of anything much worse. I just think. You know, you miss out on so much, especially when the kids are at the age that our kids are at. You know, we'd be missing out on a lot, wouldn't we? Yeah. So the day, those day-to-day interactions and moments are, you know, without getting too deep and sentimental, they're, <laughs> they're pretty amazing, right? Yes, they really are. Um, and, and yeah, I just I, I think that that's probably one of the biggest positives for me is that is being able to have that bit of flexibility. I mean, there are times when I kind of, you know, as much as it's it can be amazing when we talk about those experiences and those yeah. those, those trips and that traveling. You know, being away from them is also yeah. equally don't hard get us and wrong. difficult. Yeah. You know? Don't get us wrong. Um, Weekends can be taxing and, um, yeah, and there's a lot of conversations and a lot of um, like-mindedness that you need to have with your family in order to sort of manage that, the, the push and pull of um, the business of a, of a season, really. But yeah. at the same time, the flexibility that we get from it, um, yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the pro and cons of it, really, which... Yeah, I find a beautiful thing. So if you, if you were to start now, say somebody is listening to this now that is, you know, they're sat in that Monday to Friday, nine till five. Mm-hmm. They've, they're in silence. <laughs> they've got the drone of the air conditioning in the background. Yeah. Um, but they've just got a, an AirPod in and they're just listening to this little podcast that we've put together and they've got a desire to kind of get away. What, what, would, you, what would you do now if you were starting again? If you were starting over, how would you approach that transition? Quit now. <laughs> maybe, no. maybe, maybe let's not open up lawsuits to the podcast before we even started, right? Um, I, I am not that adventurous when it comes to um, that sort of, yeah. Do you need a moment to think about this one? Um. Basically, yeah. <laughs> I would do exactly what I did. So, yeah. I because in some way it's what I know, and I it worked, and it's the safe. Okay, I think the one thing that, the one thing that wouldn't change for me looking at your situation is you wouldn't have lost that work ethic. Like yeah, that, that work ethic was was clearly there. Yeah, you know, yeah, to be able to do the the volume that you did with the job that you did. Yeah, you were obviously driven to yeah. to achieve that. But yeah. Um, I would definitely keep both of them running um, to a specific point, whether you want to quit early, quit job early oh, or not. You, you yes, fair enough. I was going to say to you, would you would you have quit earlier again if you were if you were doing? Yes, that? and I think um, that was one of the points that um, I forgot to get to um, um, when I heard your story about about how you did it, because it's one of the things that I wish I had done. Um, quit earlier and and just go full into it. But yeah, if I were to start today, I would try to learn as much as possible. There's no excuses. There's no excuses for anyone really to break into this industry. Um, I think it's one of the one of the industries that the entry level point is so low. Yeah, it's so low, and the knowledge and resources out there to really start something is and just to go on that journey yeah yeah you know, and just to you know, i always I, I always have to kind of whenever i've uh, educated photographers it's kind of just to let them know like yeah don't compare yourself to somebody that's been going for seven or eight years you've just got to make a start haven't yeah. you and and just accept that your work is going to evolve and it's yeah. going to improve there is no out of the box solution yeah. other than 
just experience yeah, and knowledge. That's it. And you don't need to have the best gear or anything like that. You can rent stuff and you don't necessarily need to buy it and sort of like own it. But at the same time, I guess the main priority that I would have would be very much to create content, not even sort of um, be worried about bookings and yeah. um, create content, especially in the day and age that we live today. Um, that would be the main priority. Be able to say that this is what I do or this is what I'm good at or this is what I'm offering and well that creating content is is marketing yeah yeah you know, that's that, it that, that's it you need to shout about it and be able to show that hey this is what i can do and this is what i can provide to you this is the value that i can give to you and this is the skill that i can bring to your day so yeah creating content however you do it i know it can be um controversial in terms of like i don't know workshops uh, or content creation workshops whatever yep. But yeah, go go for it. Go and do them because um, there's so many resources out there. And I think that, again, there's no excuse for people to... No, of course not. No. Um, and, and I think even though you know, the landscape has clearly changed since we started, mm -hmm. you, know, you, said, you said at the start of that response, I think I would do exa exactly the same. And I think you would in the sense of in, in, you would just assess the landscape now. Yeah. And you would go and put content out to those channels yeah and in sense of the work ethic as well go hard at it try to network as much as possible yeah try to um whatever workshop that you're able to get your hands on do it because there is where you're going to meet people that are very much like-minded and will be able to propel you forward yeah. and push you forward in i think i think it is one of the one of the most common questions that we probably both get asked as, as educators is what would you do? What, how would you market yourself now? How would you, you know, if you were starting out again? Mm -hmm. um, and there is no right or wrong, is there really? Yeah. But you, you, you're never going to get any work if you just sit in your own space. Yeah. You don't tell anybody about what you're doing. You don't yeah. create content. You yeah. don't push it out there. Yeah. You know, Tra if travel as much as possible as well, that would be one of the main pillars that I would say, because um, you'd be able to, especially if you want to get into destination weddings, because, um, who would want to hire someone that constantly shoots at the same place? So, yeah, um, try to travel as much as possible on your own back. And, and I think just, just to go back to the points we talked about earlier about yeah. those early couples recognizing something in our work. Yeah. I often find myself thinking, I, I, I talk about this on, on, on our course, it's like your, your, your photography journey, you have to have a passion for it mm -hmm. outside of weddings. You can't, you can't get into the industry or build yourself as a as a wedding photographer without a real passion for creating images because it will get hard. Yeah, yeah. You can't lose that. Um, so you've got to, you know, have those little projects, have those little trips away. Yeah. Take your camera, document it, make a make a blog post of it, mm -hmm. put images out on Instagram from it. Do a real what, whatever it might be, whatever the landscape, how, you know, however the landscape currently lies, make the most of those channels with those images that you've you've created. Yeah, like, like you said become a creator you've got to create content and i think people will always be drawn to that yeah you know people will always see potential in that work and then once you've kind of got a foothold in the industry then you can kind of grow your business can't you yeah 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 Have you answered that. that question yeah i think so um anything else you'd like to add um don't be bogged down in terms of earning money um again your priority is really just to create yeah your priority is to show off what you're able to do and then um from that um the business will grow money will come and you're able to to learn really but at the same time yeah that's the other one educate yourself in terms of business yeah it's it's one of the things that i see and creatives well, I, I even feel like I, I even feel like i've been in that place though for two or three years i think yeah. i think pre-covid i think i got into a place where things were just comfortable like i was doing well as a, as a business i was mm -hmm. you know a very well established wedding photographer now and I, I was you know I've been earning you know good enough money from it mm -hmm. and I think I did I think for a year or two I just I felt like I didn't need to address those you know well, like we said at the start knowledge gaps I didn't yeah. need to look into that because I was comfortable yeah things were everything's working things were going okay why would I why would I need to go and learn video I'm, I'm a photographer but that catches up with you at some point yeah no that's awesome I love that I really really like that um so, if you weren't a photographer, but I am a photographer, 
So if you weren't a photographer, but I, but I am a photographer. <laughs> so if you were yeah. not okay, a photographer, I know this is going right. Okay, what would you oh, see know. yourself doing today? Um, well, again, it comes back to that point I've just made about being a photographer, but like having that real passion for image for making images. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think you can go anywhere or, or achieve anything in any kind of career or profession if you haven't got some kind of desire or passion for it. So I, I would fall back to my next passion, which would probably be, and this might sound not what anyone's expecting, furniture designer. And I, it, took, it actually took me a few years after finishing my degree to realize that I have a real passion for furniture and design. Um, because my, unfortunately, I kind of mentioned it earlier, my lecturers just didn't really inspire me in the way that I would like to yeah. have been inspired. Yeah. Um, and the parts of that degree that I look back on now and go, God, I love that. It was whenever it came to yeah, producing furniture. And I can go back to even my graphic design A-level mm-hmm. and thinking, God, the, the products that I did there, I, I didn't do what everyone else chose. I did like a piece of furniture. And it's, it's funny, isn't it, how you can then <laughs> look back on it and go, why did I do that? Yeah. Why did I do that? I like that. So I think, <laughs> I think if I was going to do anything, I'd, I'd pursue that. And I'd, I'd love, if I was in that industry, I'd be looking at new things again. I'd be looking at other channels. You know, I love, I, I've never done it, but I'd love to have a go at pottery. I'd love to throw <laughs> yeah, some clay. I can see that. I can see that. I'd love to do something that's a bit hands-on yeah, on, yeah. and make stuff. Yeah. Um, what about you? Um, quite similar in terms of the hands-on thing. and But yeah, I've, I've got a couple I love food, proper foodie. So, yeah, I could see myself being a chef and I would go hard at it. I would, yeah, really, really, yeah, go really what hard you, at what it. Do you cook for, what, what are you cooking for me next week? Ooh. What are you going to do? <laughs> do you fancy duck? Well, I'm a vegetarian, so no, probably Ooh. not. Okay. Uh, you, you'll challenge me into creating <laughs> a, a nice vegetarian dish. And um, yeah, invite Gemma along. One of the, maybe that's one of the episodes. In years, you know, a few months down the line, let's, <laughs> let's, let's do a cook, cook Let's cook for each other. Um, I'd love to see. I'd love to see you in the kitchen. But yeah, um, I would love to um, be a chef and and just having the. Um, Have you ever worked in a kitchen? Um, I cook at home. I've never worked at a kitchen. In a commercial kitchen? No, never, never. Um, but yeah, I'm the cook at home, and I love. I love that space. Um, I love the hands-on element of yep. it, but at the same time, it just takes me to a different mindset or it just takes me to a different place, cooking. And at the same time, the creativity that you have yeah. of it. You, yeah, it's a real craft. Yeah. Um, real craft. And and that's where I really, I really enjoy it. And you've I, you've I like, definitely got the work ethic for it. I've, I've worked in a couple of, not big kitchens, but like, you know, for fast food chains and also mm-hmm. a and also a kitchen yeah the level of commitment and effort and work and and work ethic that anybody has to work in a any kind of kitchen i think yeah. it's just astonishing it's you know, the yeah. hours that go into that production yeah um you know it blows my mind i mean one of my favorite things on netflix is chef's table i don't know if yeah. you watch that yeah 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 i, I just love i love seeing the behind the scenes stuff that you know it goes into that yeah goes into those creations and the yeah. production of uh of of, of food yeah. I mean it's, it's just, it's, it is astonishing yeah it's art I yeah. love that it's art and yeah there's this great movie called Burn um, I can't remember the name of the actor it's the same one that did Limitless but um, the whole the whole movie is just the sheer um, competitiveness and and the brutality of being within the kitchen and chefs just really just trying to be competitive and being the best at what they can be yeah. in at the craft. Yeah, I love that. I love the creative element of it. At the same time, um, I could see myself being Portuguese. I can see myself um, having a vineyard somewhere in the north of I Portugal. Can see, I can see that. Yeah. I can see that. And and opening a bar literally next door to it and, and just have, what's, again. What's stopping you one day? One day. You never yeah. know. You never know. You never know, but yeah. Um, again, it's the whole. I mean, I hope for selfish reasons that you end up going on to having a vineyard. <laughs> I mean, three boxes of wine your be, way will that, be. I'll, yeah, I'll will make you. Guaranteed. I'll make you some nice pottery, <laughs> and you can you can you can put wine in it. Yeah, that's it. Sounds perfect. Amazing. So so yeah, um, yeah. I think from those answers, it still shows our, our creative hearts really, and we would still 
be doing something creative. Yeah, which... and I think I think it doesn't matter. Again, we've we've touched on it a few times. You can have all the creative ideas in the world if you haven't got the if you haven't got the the drive or the commitment to to push for that and mm-hmm. to to kind of see it through as well. You know, um, you, you're never going to. So I, I've always been I, I've always been somebody that just gets on with it and does it. I'm not somebody that's I'm not a sayer. I mean, I, if I say something, I'm going to do it. Yeah. You know, I'm not one of these people that would just say something then like a year later, I, I haven't done anything towards that. Yeah. Because I'd, I'd almost feel embarrassed, you know, if somebody was like, oh, how's that project going that you said you were going to do? <laughs> I'm like, oh, I didn't never did it. I, I just couldn't, I couldn't do it. It's, yeah. not in, it's not in my makeup to do that. Yeah. Um, what was, what was your childhood like? What was your, what was, the, what, paint a picture of Little Eagle for us. <laughs> Little Eagle. Little Eagle. <laughs> Um, well, um, my parents, they used to be missionaries, so they used to travel all over Europe, um, all over Sweden. Well, we ended up settling in Sweden, but they used to travel all over Europe um, handing out Bibles and, and clothes to different communities. And yeah, that's how I grew up, literally just tagging along with them, really, and constantly meeting new people and seeing new places. Um, I was born in Portugal, then eventually we settled in Sweden for a few years and then back to Portugal and then UK, eventually became home and lots of different places dotted around. Yeah, in where between else, the, where, any, any particular standouts? Um, no, no, Sweden, Sweden would be the standout really. Um, it's just a totally different culture really and... Um, <laughs> being being in in the in the small town that we were called Alvesta, and and growing up almost as the only black kid within your school sort of thing. Yeah. Um, you just grew up. That's that's all I knew. That's all I knew really. So, um, yeah. Um, constantly grew up like that. Really. Uh, anyway. Where did you, but, where did you settle? Um. Eventually, yeah, we settled here really, and something that. I've always got from my from my dad and always admired is that um, whilst he did what he did in terms of like the missionary work, he always had sort of like an entrepreneurial spirit. And <laughs> even even today, he constantly says that you just copying me, <laughs> <laughs> you're just copying me. <laughs> and yeah, he used to have he used to have a restaurant, he used to have a bookshop, and his work ethic was incredible absolutely incredible and there was a point there he used to um work in norway whilst we were in portugal and constantly providing for us that sort of like immigrant mindset yep. of going out to provide for the family um, it set the example for you hasn't yeah it? yeah know. very much very much so and yeah and and here we are today in some ways and in in peterborough <laughs> in peterborough <laughs> that's where you're that's, that's where you're yeah. where you're settled yes very much so good old sunny peterborough it's not sunny um but yeah it just works it just works peterborough it's great because um we've got our families there yeah and yeah zion's got a family there i've got my family there and now that um, we are what three years in into building a family and our girls. Yeah. Um, it just means that um, it's a great way of them growing up together with everyone around them. Yeah, good. Um, what that's... was your what was your school life like? Ooh, how, was, how was school for you? Um, I mean, that's the kind of question that could just open a can of worms. Yeah, very really. much so. I think I think because. I was constantly in the minority. I was, it's not as if I grew up in schools where um, there were a lot of black people or, or ethnic minorities, really. Um, you could always, I, I always stuck out like a sore yeah. thumb. Was that uh, an issue though? No, you, that's, you, that's, that's what I'm trying yeah, to get was, to. In so, in so, some, you know, were you welcomed in? Yes, it? very you much know, so. You, you weren't made to feel like a minority. No, definitely not. Definitely not. And at the same time, um, growing up, I, I, I could confidently say I was quite, confident kid and yeah quite popular in some ways but um yeah I don't know I don't know what what else I can say yeah. um, um I don't know <laughs> <laughs> what about you so should I, should I, should I take it should I take the reins should I take over what for a minute you? give you yeah. a breather so I, I don't know I mean like for me like school school life I was 
I mean, it's it's funny, isn't it? Like, I just didn't, I didn't really conform to school in yeah. the education system. Yeah. yeah. Um. Oh, I wasn't rebellious. I just yeah. didn't. I just it just had no interest. Coffee man's here again. <laughs> um. I just had no real interest in. Yeah. In school. Um. I I can still remember my parents being told when I was probably in year three or four that I was a bit of a daydreamer. <laughs> you know, I would look out the window and you know I'd not. I'd, my attention span wasn't very good. And yeah. Yeah, you know, over the years I've started to, I've always questioned why, why is that? And I just, I don't know, I just think the environment of school yeah. has never, I've never felt that connection to it. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm sure we're going to talk about this in, in further episodes, but like the whole school system being geared so heavily towards science, English and maths. Mm-hmm. And I, they were just never my strong points. They were, yeah. That was, you know, my passion has never been in those subjects. Yeah. Um. I just wanted to do art. I, mm-hmm. You know, anything that I, anything that was a, a positive memory for me at school would have would have hinged around being in the art room class yeah, or yeah. The, or graphic design. That was it. That's all I ever wanted to do or be. And um, anything outside of that for me was just a bit boring. Yeah, you know? yeah. I think for me, um, it was a bit. It was quite different, really, especially coming from a sort of african parents background where you were either a doctor or a pastor yeah, yeah. So, i'm sure there's lots of, parents, <laughs> lots of people that would be able to relate to that yeah so um i would say i was quite um not educational what would be what would be the word i was quite uh i don't know what is the word my brain is going but yeah, I was we quite. Can cut, we can was, cut that silence. I out, was quite. Know. I was quite adept at school. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm sure there's a word out there, but I just can't remember it. But yeah, I was quite adept at school, and yeah, the the maths and the sciences they were yeah. my thing really. So much that I was going to do forensic criminology at a university, and it was only until I um, had a gap year and got introduced to graphic design a little bit and thought. I really like this. This yeah. is really different. Can you imagine if you'd have gone down that route, oh, man. Um, because I think a lot of I think a lot of people do do that. I mm. think they get to probably their you know mid thirties and wonder, yeah. did I make a mistake? Should I, should I have actually gone with yeah where my where my where my heart was? Yeah, um, yeah, that's it. And and for me that that turn was massive, absolutely massive. And um, my fear was just my parents. Really, it wasn't even right, okay <laughs> because literally. Uh, again from the whole <laughs> african parents sort of background thing um yeah my fear was just my parents but no they were incredibly supportive really and and yeah um university happened and um studied graphic design and that's when the wedding photography sort of like started to kick off and yeah my first early years of university i was I was flourishing like firsts, firsts on, on yeah, most this, of the... This is, this is where we're going to differ now. <laughs> this is where we're going to differ. <laughs> on most of the years. And then my last year. And I think in some ways, wedding photography <laughs> is to blame him in some ways. But no, I have to take full responsibility. But yeah, that year, I absolutely flopped it. Like my last year, just flopped it and I ended up just with a diploma uh, for my whole universe four years of university really and yeah that, that was a hard how, how do you reflect on that now how what what do you take from that it was a hard lesson to learn but um but I know of myself that whenever I get to sort of like the 80 percent or 85 95% of whatever I'm doing that's that's when I really struggle and I really have to push it that that the last 5% you could that could be yeah. a show in itself really yeah. <laughs> oh, we, I'm, a show I'm, pretty, title. I'm pretty sure it is one of the episodes yeah. we've, we've already discussed the yeah. last 5% um I learned that I really struggle I really have to push hard at it and I really yeah, I really have to know myself on those that I have to push push it really because, yeah, um, I can easily quit that. So yeah, and I think which is, which is a shame, isn't it? When you put yeah. in, you know, what would have been a good three years to a degree, yeah. to, uh, you know, put it bluntly, flunk the final year. Yeah, yeah. it's a shame. Yeah, it really is. Um, it really is. At the same time, 
yeah, onwards and upwards. And, and I'm so happy that I was able to really push wedding photography because of that. But yes, um, lesson learned in terms of the last 5%. I suppose, I suppose really it's about having a kind of, and this is a, a really big uh, subject, isn't it? Like that self-awareness and yeah. that, that realisation. Like you're, you're obviously smart and intelligent enough to realise that, that that's a trait yeah. and you need to counter it. And yeah. You need to... You know, you, you know that getting that sort of last five percent or getting over the line with it with a yeah. project is is tough. And, yeah. But I think I think I think that is the case with a lot of things. I yeah. think uh, you know any project that we've been through, like yeah. that last hurdle, I'm finding it now with the with the e course, and I found it before like getting certain website projects over the line is mm-hmm. you know the, the three or four months building up to it, they're fine, everything's going great or yeah. whatever, or it's it's fine. But once you get to deadline week, it's like oh Ooh. hold on a second, we've yeah. actually got quite a lot to do here yeah um but for me going back to like university time i was very different i went i went i can remember going to university on that first day and being told right then sam so um in order to pass your first year you need a d minus <laughs> and that was what i got i was that was it once i got told that that was the minimum yeah which actually kind of now seems very like it it feels strange for me to say that yeah because it's not in my makeup to to have that approach. Yeah. To go, I'm just going to do the bare minimum. Just, because yeah. actually, I'm now the absolute opposite. It's not about doing the bare minimum. It's about how do I over deliver? Yeah. How do I provide a better experience? How can I provide more value? How, yeah. You know, and go in hard. Yeah. Here, all my chips. And I, and I wonder if being able to reflect on that time again has impacted me to make sure that I don't make that mistake again. Yeah. Um, because I almost didn't make my final my second year. I almost I almost failed it, and. and yeah, maybe maybe that then was a that kick started what what has become mm-hmm. me and my business since. Yeah, because I thought, shit, I can't have that. That can't happen again. Yeah, you know, again, it was for me. It was probably like the fear. It probably wasn't the fear of failure. It was probably the fear of going back to mum and dad and saying, I uh, failed my first year. Yeah, I can't imagine what that would have been like. So, <laughs> um, I certainly made sure that I haven't done that. Yeah, made that mistake again. Yeah. What What, what were your parents like growing up? Um. A very very supportive um i've got two two younger brothers so they you know they had their hands full like having three <laughs> boys you yeah. know I, I can certainly see it now probably at the time didn't quite recognize just how difficult that would have been but obviously now i have a a, a daughter and a, a son i can i yeah. can realize that you know that's that's hard and, and my dad's um you know he he did have that night he did have that monday to friday job he would you know amazingly we moved to derby because of a job Mm -hmm. and then a a few years later once we were all settled he then got offered another job in Coventry so he ended up commuting most days so you know dad dad would be out the house before seven o'clock and probably wouldn't be home till seven in the evening so um I imagine that was that was really tough but like you said as well with your your parents you know it's about doing what you've got to do to provide for your family and yeah you know I've always been able to really appreciate uh, appreciate that and and the 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 importance of of that work ethic to go out and do what you've got to do for your family yeah um what was the question <laughs> my mind just completely switched no, no, off no. then no you you, um, you answered it really and um, it was very much how how your parents were as you were growing up really and yeah. i mean my pet you know my i don't really know where the entrepreneurial side of me comes from yeah. like you know my dad's worked for the council um my mum worked for the nhs and i'm not sort of downplaying what they did yeah. you know they've, they've had really you know impactful careers but I actually think my granddad was probably my bigger influence in terms of where I've taken my business. And yeah. actually, it was only the other week that I started to really think about this question and what how I'd respond to it. And, you know, my, my granddad, amazingly, in the late 80s, had a an I, a, a computer teaching company. Like he taught students IT. <laughs> um, and it just started making me think about the parallels between, you know, he was also very creative. He was, you know, he would hand paint Christmas cards <laughs> and he would paint pictures of his boat and he was always very hands-on and creative. And um, I think a lot of that transferred to, I feel like I, I took a lot of that on and, you know, I can remember going to his house and we'd, he'd show me how to draw a Spitfire airplane and, you know, just those little things that you kind of go, that really, that was like a little spark. Yeah. That was something that like, I really, I used to love that. Yeah, you know, I enjoyed that more than school. Yeah, you know, um, but it's funny, isn't it, when you kind of can see those parallels between a yeah, very much. You so. know, yeah, you know, my granddad's. You know, being an educator, being in a creative industry, being in IT, something very ahead. You know, late eighties. That's it. What, what are we doing here? I thought you were doing a high five and you stood <laughs> no, me no, up. No, but yeah, you can see, you can see it. Like yeah. you know, you got to remember back then. 
you know, the late eighties, early nineties, there, there, you know, there weren't many computers around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was that yeah. was my that was my kind of childhood experience. Yeah, I didn't yeah. like school. Yeah, you didn't like school. Didn't like it. Um, I just think I think the structure of it and the you know again like we we said about the the focus and the emphasis on those core subjects. Unless that's your passion, school's yeah. just not for you. And I think I'm pretty sure that there'll be a lot of people listening to this, and anybody that's creative in a creative industry and field will go, yeah, they'll have a very similar experience. Yeah, which is a shame because. You know the creative industries kind of provides the 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 meat and bones of what we all live for. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, all of those experiences that people love and pay good money for to enjoy come from being creative. Yeah. You know, go, be going to a restaurant, going to a nice restaurant, and see what you, you know. Going yeah. to the theatre. Yeah. Going to the cinema. Yeah. Even putting here, a, this putting, one we sat on putting and... a picture up on a wall. Yeah. You know, all of those things that we you know that give value and 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 you know enjoyment to our lives come from a creative industry yeah so it, it kind of drives me a little bit mad that the creative industries are a little bit neglected i think yeah but at the same time um we live in a day and age where where if you want to learn something within a creative yeah, industry and I think that's how the times have changed yeah um the resources that are out there you get so many stuff out there that that really can push things forward really for for whichever way you want to learn say yeah the world's who, your oyster who inspired you at, at school just just quickly is there like it, or, or during during those sort of formative years of being a i was going to say a mardi teenager but i can't imagine you're a mardi man but you know like <laughs> you, when you're a moody teenager and, and <laughs> you're finding yourself who who was your kind of inspiration who was your kind of beacon of light um so who inspired me? I mean, outside of you, you know, your obvious parents. Yeah. Um, oh, I've always been quite creative. And, and even at school, at a young age, I was a diehard emo. And I can't, I can't see that. <laughs> I used to have a fringe and everything. Oh, I can't wait to see the pictures. <laughs> when, when we come around, when we come around to, when we come to Peterborough and you cook this, uh, this five-star gourmet meal for, for us and Zai brings out the photos, I, I can't, I can't wait. Who knew that a black guy could have an emo fringe literally slipped down? <laughs> Man, those were the days. Um, yeah, so music constantly used to inspire me and... I always loved it, um, but uh, it's a hard question. I guess, I guess my dad. My dad is a massive thing, really. Um, but you said aside from your parents, yeah. so I have to really think about this. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Um, I guess the two massive influences. Um, in terms of me as a photographer and how the business has kind of like the direction I've taken um, Basquiat okay um, Jean-Michel Basquiat the the artist he 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 is like number one in some ways just his ability to really deconstruct things and and really mess it up in terms of the art they created and at the same time being a black artist that um, became like so prominent, so uh, incredible to see that um, black artists can do that and actually elevate the art world and change it and yep. and just create incredible stuff. Really, obviously, he had his issues and everything else, but him and Andy Warhol, they they kind of like my in some way artistic heroes really yeah, yeah warhol's simply because of his polaroids and the, the way he was able to capture new york the new york celebrity scene really um and yeah absolutely love that um yeah i think i'll leave it at that really yeah, the because, big ones yeah. the big ones they're yeah. not what i was expecting i was yeah. i was going down i was asking the question really more towards who inspired you that you had a you know that you knew like directly yeah so yeah. Like for me i'll tell you now it was mr rice mr rice mr okay. rice my art teacher <laughs> you know and this is why this yeah. is why i get so frustrated when i look back on school no like, way. because like the my art teacher was called mr rice as well no way <laughs> yes no you can't, that, yes. that can't have happened yes. you're yes. joking me yes and that's why i, I mean i'm not sure what the chances of that are and that's why i went but, into my gap year and literally 
I, I created my sort of like gap year portfolio to kind of like go in and wow uh, and do this sort of like graphic design thing um at at this charity really yeah because of mr rice and yeah yeah, yeah. i had a couple of t- I had mr rice and then uh <laughs> mr Stora as well who was the graphic design um teacher and 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 my, i think he was a head of year actually and and that's what really frustrates me about school is that you know i had two people that had a massive influence on me mm-hmm. but i only saw them a couple of times in the week yeah you know the rest of the yeah no sorry to the other teachers but i just wasn't inspired <laughs> yeah um and i just wish i could have spent a bit more time focusing on that and 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 kind of being given a bit more of a a bit more guidance around kind of going you know what sam this is these are your strengths yeah this is what you're clearly passionate about you can go into these inter- you know I, i'll often tell this to people i didn't know that design agencies existed until i was probably in my early 20s and i'm like god that's four or five years out of school when I didn't realize yeah. that a world of, I think I've got an Amazon delivery coming. It wouldn't be a first episode without an Amazon delivery. Um, it, you know, yeah, it's fine, mate. You just drop it down there. Is it fine? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I've moved into a new studio. I need new bits of stuff, so it's fine. It's been quite a regular occurrence over the last few weeks. Um, it lost my train of thought, though. Um, um, Yes, so I've got it back. Design studio. I've got it back. I've got it. Hold on, I've got it back, Igor. Got my train of thought back. Um, is is really like when I was at school, and this is my this is my number one frustration. Is all I was told that I could go and do as a creative was go and be an architect. Yeah, and that's the one thing. If I could go back and change anything, mm-hmm. it would be to just try and seek out. And this is where I kind of hope that the world and the environment around school has changed. Now is that yeah. kids don't have that, you know, um, kind of. Like Mister, like there's just it's everything's so much more accessible now. Yeah, you know we never had that. Yeah, you know we were just going off what people told us that were around us, and if you're not around the right people that don't know that yeah, you can go it. and do that, you've got no chance. And we've obviously had to go on a journey ourselves to find those avenues and those offshoots. Whereas now, I would hope that our kids yeah. will be able to go. No, do you know what? This is what I love doing. I've seen it on Instagram or whatever, whatever it is going to be in 15 years <laughs> yeah. time, and go. I'm going to go and do that, yeah. and I hope they go and do it. I was, I was, I was heading that way really, and and some ways just literally say that now you will be able to literally impart that sort of attitude to your to your kids or our kids that there's so many possibilities oh, out there. The world's your oyster. You can yeah. do so much, and yeah, and in the day and age of TikTok, where creators can literally become uh, create businesses and business empires really simply because they're doing something from their bedroom yeah absolutely um it's incredible well, we really. can high five to that can't we yeah can high five <laughs> yes i'm liking that one definitely definitely saying so, so yeah it will be it'll be exciting to really get in delve into that world as well through through the podcast and the guests yep. that we bring and again just really open people's eyes to the possibilities that are out there and just encourage people and yeah encourage people to get out there and be creative and not just think about business and entrepreneurship in a linear way but there's so many avenues that you can take yeah, and, constantly it's yeah. constantly you know evolving and moving and you know i was going to say something it's gone again um <laughs> but, but it is but it is it's 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 about recognizing that you know it's not like it's just it's all a, it's all a process it's all a journey and yep. you either want to do it or you don't yeah but if you want to do it the stuff's out there the knowledge is out there the resource is out there mm-hmm. you've just got to take that plunge haven't you i think yeah try and finish it <laughs> but coming back to our final few points then yeah this podcast and 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 how we're going to bring it together and, and what we're going to hopefully offer our our audience you know, again, it, for me, it always comes back to the, those conversations and the, those little experiences that not just me and you are going to be able to share with each other, but the people that are going to come on the podcast. Yeah. So, you know, if you've watched this episode and you're like, do you know what? I think you guys should have so-and-so on it. Like, tell us. Yeah. Tag, be awesome. Put it on Instagram. Yeah. Share it with us. Let us know. Like, we would love to kind of get your ideas over who should be coming on this podcast to talk to us and, and share their share their experience, share their, you know, their their positive memories, their, 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 their mistakes in business, 
you know, what they do again, you know, we'd love to have those conversations with those people. So let us know. Let us know. Thank you so much. Anything that you want to wrap up with? No, I think that's it. Thank you so much for listening. You've been awesome, meaning the audience. And yeah, please share, subscribe as much as you can, um, because that's how this little podcast will grow we hope (laughs) we don't know do we no we don't we don't know we don't but yeah we're in for the journey of it for sure but yeah thank you so much for listening and see you on the next one that's a wrap that's a wrap i think if we said that on the first episode then this is going to be we can't keep saying that but yeah it's fine it doesn't matter (laughs) i'll stop i'll stop waffling now let's just cut it off (laughs) okay bye-bye bye see you soon guys